Meanwhile, California's Fair Pay to Play Act is being hailed as a game changer, allowing college athletes to profit from their name, image, or likeness for the first time. It's facing pushback from the NCAA, with critics arguing it could lead to sham endorsements, fewer rules, and even the demise of college sports. My next guest is a sports law expert who spent more than a decade on both sides of the bargaining table as an NFL front office exec with the Packers and as a player agent with the likes of Michael Jordan. Joining me now is Andrew Brandt. He is executive director of the Jeffrey Morad Center for Sports Law Study at Villanova. Uh, Andrew, it's great to see you. So um, my first question, you were saying the NCAA was already working on loosening up some rules. What specifically might they have to come up with now in order to prevent a, a maelstrom here? Yeah, Kelly, there is a committee working on this already, headed by Val Ackerman, the chairman of the Big East, and Gene Smith, to come up with recommendations about this very issue, name, image, and likeness revenue for athletes. They're due to a report on something later in the fall, but obviously this is going to push up the time frame and make some other issues. They've got to address this. They want to loosen up restrictions. They don't want it to ever get near the idea of pay for play where you lose amateurism, however we define that in right. college sports. Here's what our former colleague Darren Ravel said about this last night. He said, this is what comes with a move like this. The end of the NCAA, he says, fewer rules and more cheating and the complete professionalization of college sports. Players likely won't need to go to class. You agree with that? I think it's a little hyperbole. What we're going to see, though, is potential recruiting violations. Whenever there's a, an, an, a law like this or a, a restriction loosened, there's going to be abuse. And maybe schools do these kind of athlete compensation packages when they're recruiting, and it becomes an arms race to get the top players. Listen, the top players hold all the cards in basketball and football. We know that. That's not going to change. That may exacerbate a little bit. The key is what happens to the 99.9% .9 of the other athletes? And now maybe you have opportunities to go do autograph signings, maybe to get some money for jersey sales, mm -hmm. for EA, for video sports, and even for, like, swimmers and golfers and tennis players to go out and maybe do some clinics and things like that, which they haven't been able to do. So it could have far-reaching effects, but I don't think it's the death of the NCAA, as some would suggest. Right. The uh, Pac-12 itself, uh, the Western Conference, is worried that it would uh, reduce opportunities for student athletes in the Olympics, have a negative impact on female student athletes uh, because they wouldn't get as much. Real quickly, Andrew, is this the end of the NCAA as we know it? Listen, 2023 is when this law goes into effect. So we have a three year runway to get something done. The NCAA has talked about litigation, they've talked about these new rules, they've talked about all these things, but and now we have Florida and, and New York and also, also states following California, and the NSA wants a federal solution. So there's a lot of chaos right now. Yeah. But again, a three-year runway to get this done, and I think the NSA is going to come up with the restrictions, loosen them up, and see what we can come up with so we stave off Armageddon. Yeah, so the momentum is still in that direction no matter what happens here. Andrew, thanks very much. I think so. Appreciate it. Andrew Brandt. It.